I swear I saw something weird. Don't, don't now. Stop it. Stop it. Stop it. Stop it. Okay. Fuck off! It's that. It's that. It's exactly it. That's f Imagine a fucking face coming out. Oh, shut up, you dickhead. <laughs> you little fucking dickhead. <laughs> Welcome to episode 29 of Ghost Hunts. That was... Ghost Hunts. Coming at ya. like a weird new creepy girl band. Emotional Echo. Oh, do you know what? What a nice episode Rachel was a dream. She was an absolute dream. And now we're back to normal. Oh, it sucks coming back to normal. <laughs> <laughs> Just me and oh, you fuck in sake. the pod studio. Me and you in the pod studio. Um, how have you been? I've been okay. Yeah. Yeah. I think Just I've been... okay. You kind of you've got a manic look in your eye, like you're about to have a. I think it's because I've had just li meltdown. little sleep, and mm. you know, and you're just you're just busy. Yeah. And so I think you know you and you're running on a different energy source, mm. which isn't the normal one. It's the one that's. <laughs> Um, how are you? <laughs> I feel exactly the same <laughs> way. Uh, no, things are good. Um, yeah, just absolutely fucking haunted now, aren't I? Now I believe in ghosts. Mm. Since Richard at Chillingham Castle, now I believe in ghosts. I just, everything's freaking me out. Yeah, I am starting to see things in corners. And Have you seen a film called Tar? No, I've seen a film called The T Rubber, which is about a killer, killer, killer car tyre. What? Have you ever seen that? No. Oh, it's fucking great. It's this car tie that goes around killing people. I would love to watch oh that. Oh my god, you need to watch it. At one point, it's even like like it comes alive and it just goes around killing people. Oh my god, that's yeah. so up my alley. It's so good. <gasps> oh, what's it's it very called? Gory. The rubber. It's called rubber. Rubber. Because yeah. they, the rubber is it's a like, condom um, in the states. Isn't a lot it? of people say, yeah, it is. Yeah, but this is not a gigantic <laughs> killer, a condom. killer condom. <laughs> <laughs> we should write that. Okay, anyone who's listening, sorry, copyright. Yeah, TM, TM, the rubber TM. Yeah, private jinx Totswood. <laughs> the Amazing. killer condom. The killer, the killer rubber. <laughs> The killer Trojan. That was <laughs> ribbed for her death. <laughs> ah, yes. <laughs> oh, oh my God! I love it. Does the penis? Does the penis? <laughs> does the penis go does into the, the vagina? Does the rubber need to be around a penis to kill? Or because I don't know whether it's like. I think it, it I think it could around. slink off like a slinky and like bounce down the stairs. Oh, like, I love that like Toy Story. <laughs> yeah, <laughs> but a rubber. <laughs> well, maybe we could do a like an adult Toy Story, and it's just loads of sex toys killing people. That would be so much fun. Oh, I'd love that. Also, like you know, they my, come in Mike different flavors, so they'd have different personalities. Yeah. Oh fuck's sake! Okay, it's working now. It just keeps just keeps fucking cutting out. Um, I love that. Okay, shall we do the towel? Or shall I pick this time? Well, that, you've, yeah. Is it my turn? I don't know, but okay, you I'll want go. to, so I think it's... I kind of do. Yeah, you do. Okay, pick one, go, go, go. Oh, do you know what? Immediately. Immediately. Oh, really? Immediately. What is it, Hannah? This is weird. What? Don't tell me it's repeat again. King of Wands. King of Wands? Because didn't we have the Queen? Um, Rachel got the Queen of Cups. You've got actually got the, King the King of, of Wands. Wands. I don't think we've ever had that. That's what a bloke on a throne holding a massive stick. It's a carrot. He's King of Carrots. Mm. The King of Carrots. So what is it? A wand. Have you ever had Carrot Crush? What? Carrot Crush. Is that like Candy Crush? But carrot. No, it's like um, you know, yeah, cut carrots on your roast dinner. Hmm. Oh my God! Do you want to hear what them, the mash them? Crush them, mash them, put them in your mouth. Yeah. Have you heard of... Uh, no, no why, am I, why am I repeating what you're saying? Get out of my head. Um, the King of Wands. The king symbolises long-term success as a leader. Stop trying to lead. This is a team. He has the same passion as the other cards, but the maturity to thrive. Oh, uh, You have maturity God. to thrive. Well done, you. Oh, my God. But the podcast has... 
this, no, this is about the podcast. So the podcast has the ability to lead. We're going to be the leading podcast yeah, in, leaders. in paranormal activity. We're, we're the kings. Kings oh. of the potty world. Do you know what? I needed that today. I needed that mm. today. Cheers. 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 Girl. Oh, my God. Stunning. I just cheers the mic. Anyway. <sighs> cheers the mic. Cheers the mic. Oh, I'm absolutely thrilled about that. Okay. Oh. Um, Are you going to we... check it on the internet as well? No. Why? I you don't want to. Biddytarot.com. I don't think we fucking need that. Um, wow. Are you ready to kick off with... Well, I, I might just go straight in for a creep of the week. Go on, then. Let's do creep of the week. Creep of the week. <laughs> a story for you. When I was little, we lived in Southeast Asia in a house with a lovely wild garden. The house had windows on the bars for sorry, safety. Sorry, sorry, sorry. Did you say Southeast Asia? Yes, I did. Okay, fine. Wingland. Um, Wingland. <laughs> The house had windows on the bars for safety and my bedroom upstairs overlooked the back of the property where it was pretty quiet and private. Mm -hmm. There were many trees in the garden, including a mango tree, star fruit tree, and close to the house itself, a banyan tree. What's a banyan? Banyan. Bunyan? No, B-A-N-Y-A-N. I'm just going to quickly check you, carry on. No, I'm, I'll wait for you. Banyan. Banyan! Fig tree. Fig, okay, great. I used to have fig I, trees. I love a fig perfume. But we're digressing. Can yeah, you get back into the story? A banyan is basically a fig. Sorry, carry on. <clears throat> fig perfume. Dip tea. Fuck off. Philosykos. Get on it. Fuck off. Don't tell me to fuck off. <laughs> I'm on the edge. It's a delicious <laughs> perfume. Um, <clears throat> uh, sorry. I'd, okay, thank you. I'd ha... <laughs> did you just... Yeah, did I just did a Del Boy. <laughs> um... <clears throat> I'd happily climb the fruit trees and pick the fruit, but the banyan tree was different. I used to be fascinated by its old, witchy finger-like roots and branches, but it always gave me a cold feeling when I was near it, so I tended to steer clear. My mum was concerned that it was growing too big and too close to the house, so I wanted it cut. But despite approaching a number of people, no one was prepared to cut it down. They said it was a bad omen, but didn't say much more, just muttered under their breath and left. My mum took it into her own hands and hacked at the tree one day. If you want a job done, she said, and walked away pretty chuffed with herself. <laughs> what she didn't pass on to me, <laughs> and what I only learnt later, was that the reason no one would touch the tree was because they believed that banyan trees harbour strong, spiritual energy that can attract demons. For some, it is considered the gate to the underworld, protecting spirits after death. Cutting it down would create a direct path for spirits to return to Earth. That night, I struggled to stay asleep. Not normally an issue for me on that night, but I kept being woken by something. At first, I couldn't work out what it was, and keeping my eyes shut, I didn't open them to investigate. I just wanted to sleep. But eventually, I opened my eyes, turned, and that's when I saw her. A woman dressed in white with pale alabaster skin and dark long hair, hovered outside my bedroom window. Alabaster skin? Her eyes were like two rubies, shining bright red and staring directly at me with an angry glower. Her hands were wrapped around the bars of my bedroom window and she was shaking them. Why are the bars around the window? <clears throat> it's not safe in Southeast Asia, mate. Sounds like prison. Yeah, she's in prison. <laughs> No, she's not in prison. It's just like, you know, like gated community. you got bars on the window. Your kid might try and... F she's a kid. Kids fall out of windows. Mm. Well, so this thing was just shake, was shaking... Shaking the, the bars on the window. <sighs> Terrified, I froze in fear. Couldn't move, couldn't scream. I just stared at her and waited. She stared right back at me and after what eyes. felt like an eternity. I bet I hope she hasn't got a cat. I've got a laser pen's going fucking mad. Oh, yeah. Imagine. <laughs> no. <laughs> no, that was a dog. <laughs> woof, woof. <laughs> woof, woof. That's wolf. wolf. <laughs> she slowly released her fingers from the bars. Did she just, did she just go Irish? She went, fingers. Fingers. <laughs> she slowly released her fingers from the bars. Back to away from the window and she was gone. <laughs> she went down the local pub <laughs> for a bit of a dance with a fiddle. She pulled a bat on the dogs. 
<laughs> the uh, I somehow mustered the courage to creep out of bed to look out my window and watched her float towards the hacked banyan tree where she disappeared. I saw her again a few times, never as close, but always coming from or disappearing into the spot where the banyan tree stood. Wow. Mm. <clears throat> that like, is pretty terrifying, isn't it? Signed Anonymous Ghost Hunt. Oh, Anonymous. Anonymous. Although, to be fair, I know who wrote that in. Oh. Because it's a friend of mine oh. who actually gifted the Himalayan rock salt. Oh, Shout for out. a proper ghost hunt. And also, she um, she told me the story, not even thinking it was for the pod. And I was like, that's fucking terrifying. She was like, it's true. She was like, as a kid in Singapore, she was like, I remember this happening. And she was like, there was a woman shaking the bars of my window and all the locals are like, you don't chop down the banyan tree. Do you think she was just a, do you think she was just a bit of a, <laughs> Where you going? A, a mad woman who, when you're a kid, you kind of add on things because you're a kid and it's scary. Wait, wait my friend, the mad woman is a kid no, or the mad woman at the bars. There's a mad woman at the bars. I think because the window was on the second floor. Oh yeah. So unless mad women can hover, oh climb, yeah. But if you parkour is for men and women, Susie, you sexist prick. <laughs> parkour, <laughs> the parkour. Oh, just goes. park off. Park um, parkour up your ass. Yeah, well, I'll, I'll ask her for clarification. Parkour, never even met her. <laughs> I, she does sound sort of Southeast Asian vibe, doesn't she? Pale skin. Yeah, it's like the long, ring, dark isn't it? hair. Yeah, exactly. Yeah, it's the ring. But you know, I, I think that's terrible. She also had some other add-ons to that story. I think, like, I think the banyan tree has real, like, special significance. Does she think that? Does she believe in ghosts? She says she doesn't, but she said that scared her for years, yeah. and and the fact that all the like all the people they knew who were like mm. locals were like you you don't touch the banyan and tree. And her mum's like fuck it, fuck yeah, her. you know, just like you're ruining my view. Come yeah. on, <laughs> exactly. So um, if that's a tale about Western um, meddling. I don't know what is. Do you know what I mean? Thank you. Yeah, yeah. We we butcher all the cultures. Like the banyan we? tree is culture, and I used to have a fig tree, and I thought it was a beautiful tree. Why did you want to cut it down again? Well, it was getting gnarly and oh, getting okay. into the window, and listen, I get it. I get it. Fine. I'm um. Okay. okay. Do you want a story? I. <laughs> what is going on? What is going on with you? Yes, please. I do the story. I love the story. Do you want me to do it in an accent? No. Okay. At the time of the sleepover, it was me, my best friend, both aged seven or eight. We are both now 16 and 17 and haven't talked about this incident since. We live in Florida, about 15 minutes away from Tampa. Tampa? Do Stop we have, tampering do with we my have phone. Any, do we have any tam tamperins? Tamporians? Tam tam Tampa. Tamporians, tampies, tampons, tampons? Tampons. Maybe they're called tampons, people of Tampa. Can someone please confirm whether or not you are, in fact, called tampons? Thank you. <laughs> I... Do you have preferences of tampons? Uh, no. Really? I yeah. do. What, what, what's your preference? Well, Johnny did a very nice thing and got me some the other day, and Fuck I was like, use, I can't use yeah, those. Yeah, it's pointless. Did he get you the Lillettes? Yeah, no, it wasn't a Men are drawn to them. I it don't know it why. was Pearl. He thought because it said fucking Pearl on it. And I was like, Pearls are the worst. I don't. Uh, why are they the worst? Because they're like, they're shit. They, they go outwards instead mm. of. Oh, I don't know. The whole you know, shape of them I is would, I'd designed rather by have man. Super Drug Zone cardboard applicator. Mm. Because the big for one thing, the other ones, it's like a little cotton bud. Do you know what I mean? <laughs> I don't care what thing you say they are. What absorbents flow? <laughs> <laughs> what? I don't give a shit what you say. The way there, you said there that. is less in that. They are tiny. Absorbents flow. I don't know what absorbents <laughs> flow you have. But I, yeah, don't go pearl. I just, I just think don't do tampax unless tampax want to sponsor us. In that case, I like do. the ones with that have the dark blue applicator. I don't like them either. Compact. No, they're the same. Called. That's the same issue with pearl. No, pearl's very different to that. Why? And I'll fight you to the death. Why? Because pearl, when you shove it in a substance <laughs> in a vagina, <laughs> in a vagina, it go it grows outwards. Oh, I'm sorry. I and see it goes what you mean. Wide and it's fucking uncomfortable. You can't get them in or out, and I it's just a nightmare. I see and pearl what can you get mean. Right. But it was very nice for him to have bought some, and I. But you, you had to do that thing of like. Uh, yeah, I not. prefer long. 
Long, exactly. I prefer long. Same. I do, I do. Sorry, I sorry, do. sorry. Get back to the temper. I do, do you know what? I actually don't mind a non-applicator. I don't care. I actually find I can get it more in a comfortable position if I just shove it up myself rather than use the cardboard. <laughs> Absorbency flow. Absorb <laughs> this is a podcast <laughs> brought to you by Absorbency Flow. Sorry, carry on with your story. I'm, I'm, I'm in. Okay. We're in Tampa. We're in Florida. We're asleep at sleep. Yeah. I need to sniff. Uh, 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 uh. But you came back for the cough. Thank you. Yes. It was one of our many sleepovers that we had had, and it was no different from the others. We played with Barbies. We watched movies. We read books until we couldn't take it anymore and went to bed around nine or ten. I turned off the lights and climbed up to my top bunk where both me and my friend were going to sleep. As I laid down, something immediately didn't feel right. The house I lived in was relatively old and our landlord sucked. I assume not hers because she's seven, but her parents. <laughs> and never came to fix anything. Um, he only really cared when our rent was due. Before getting in bed, I flipped on my fan and had my mum turn on the... Oh, fuck's sake. I flipped on my fan and had my mum turn the AC down. But as soon as I got in bed, my fan was turned off. So was the AC. But I thought the power went out and didn't think much of, much of it. About 20 minutes go by and I can't sleep. I feel like I'm dying of heat stroke. I'm not sure if my friend is awake, so I say her name quietly. She responds immediately, saying, I can't sleep, but it's not because it's hot. I look over and can barely see her. Only her silhouette. I look up at the ceiling and sigh and say, What is it then? She responds, saying... It's the man in the corner. Ugh. Oh, fuck's sake. There's <laughs> a man in the corner. When I say I got chills, I got chills. <laughs> They're multiplying. <laughs> I, I literally was about to say that. And quite frankly, I'm losing control. <laughs> of my life. Okay. <laughs> I got shit got a bit too real then. <laughs> too close to the bone. I look over at her slowly and then turn. <laughs> what is happening? <laughs> fuck's sake. I feel a bit mad today. Go on. Um, when I say I got chills, I got chills. You know, did you hear that? That was book from Hocus Pocus. That was the same tone. Oh, yeah. Yeah, it's good, wasn't it? Okay. When I say I got chills, I got chills. I look over at her slowly and then turn my head to look in the corner. I thought she was lying because I didn't see anything. I let out a breath of air I didn't even know I was holding in. I go to adjust my blanket and that's when I see him. A man dark and tall, seeming to stare at both of us. I immediately grip my friend's hand and close my eyes. We have to get my mom. I whispered, and I felt my friend nod, but we both laid there, unable to move. All of a sudden, I feel the movement of someone climbing up the ladder and crawling very slowly. The blankets moved with the movement and I slowly opened my eyes. I watched the man slowly start to crawl towards us from the bottom of the bed. I was gasping for air and looked over to see my friend watching too, paralyzed. I look back at the man and can only see his outline. No features. I hold my friend's hand and say, scream when I tap your finger. I barely got it out in a whisper. She slowly nodded, and as I watched the man slowly reach from my face, I tapped her hand and we were both screaming, Bloody murder! Probably not bloody murder, bloody murder. <laughs> yeah. Thank you, Foley. My mum came running in no later than 20 seconds and turned on the light. Both me and my friend were holding each other crying. There was no trace of the man. My mum checked all the doors, saying they were locked and weren't even touched. We both slept on the couch that night, watching Barbie movies and holding each other tightly. To this day, I don't know what it was or who it was, but I will always remember the eerie feeling of death being very close to my face. Fucking hell. That was great. Thank you. You, you just clapped yourself. Yeah, um, I, th I thought it was well deserved, to be honest. Do you want another little one from me? Yeah, why not? Or do you want to go? Have you got one? Um, I do, but yeah, you're you're on a roll. Do you know what? I'll just do it. You're on a chicken okay. roll. I like this because it has a very similar vibe to one that you've done before, which was probably one of my favourite stories. But I'm going to tell it anyway because it has a different premise, yeah, and okay. it's the same. It's the same kind of creepy vibe. Okay, I love it. So two dorm mates in college were in the same science class. I, by the way, American listener. Do you know what? I quickly want to shout out our American listeners for being incredibly understanding 
of our horrible accents. Everybody loves them. Everybody's into them. Everybody enjoys them. And we Thank keep you so slagging much. off your words. We keep slagging you off, and yet you continue to be nothing but understanding. So go you. We aren't going to change that. Cheerleader for you. <laughs> As you can see, it all stays the same. <laughs> <clears throat> Two dorm mates in college are in the same science class. <laughs> that does sound like you're taking the piss as well. The teacher had just reminded them about the midterm the next day. No, I'm not, gonna do, I'm not gonna do that anymore. When one dorm mate, let's call her Julie. Sorry? Julie. 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 Me Julie. Me Julie. I'm gonna mess up with mm. your big Babylons. <laughs> <laughs> Big but I fucking love that. That is a problematic song, isn't it? Oh. Was it Ali G or was it Shaggy? No, it was um me Julie. You turned me on with your big bubble on. I thought that was Ali G, because he had me Julie, didn't he? Me Julie. I thought it was Shaggy featuring Ali G. Oh, it might have been. I'm gonna just find out because that's gonna annoy me mm -hmm. so much. Me Julie. I can't remember the rest of the words. Julie. I loved Ali. It is. It is. It's Ali G and Shaggy. So we absolutely smashed that. Ah, too I mean, he's dressed like a pimp, just like with zoom in on tits. It's a very problematic song. Anyway. Let's call her Julie. Got asked to do this big bash by the hot. Got Can asked you go back a bit? Sake. Let me start again. Two dorm mates in college are in the same science class. The teacher had just reminded them about the midterm the next day when one dorm mate, let's call her Julie, got asked to the big bash by the hottest guy in school. The other dorm mate, Meg, had pretty much no interest in going out. And being a diligent student, she took notes on what the midterm was about. After the entire period flirting with her date, Julie was totally unprepared for a test, while Meg was completely prepared for a major study date with her books. Okay, so are you more Julie or are you more Meg? I'm definitely Julie. Oh, I'm definitely Meg. Oh, uh, yeah. I 100%. Just, even now, I'm Julie. Oh, no, even I'm now, Meg. when I care about my career and my life, I'm still Julie. Yeah. Fucking nightmare. Yeah, so Julie or Meg Camp, <laughs> do you know what I mean? Yeah, I was like, I remember my mum going mad at me once. She, was, she said that I was like, uh, awful because I'd got detention at school. But I wanted to go out and meet my current boyfriend. So I didn't tell her about my detention until I got back home from meeting my boyfriend that night. And she was like, that's manipulation, actually. Wow. Yeah, it was quite bad. So, yeah, so you had no hints of Meg. <coughs> Not a sprinkling. I mean... Salt Bay. <sighs> no. No. Okay. <laughs> okay, so I'm she was going to go and have a... bit of Julie. What do you mean? How can you be Meg with a bit of Julie? Like, Majuli. I'm not fully, like, in my books, but every now and then, I'll, on, a, on a week of a weekend, I'll be a bit Julie. I don't know what you're fucking talking about. Anyway, so Meg was going to go home. Julie's off on a fucking date to get fingered behind the back of the bins. <laughs> Meg's going to go home <laughs> and study for the midterm. Um, at the end of... <laughs> Do you know what American like American dating is so much classier than British dating because you British just had dating by the bins. Yeah, because that's British dating, isn't it? Like oh, American see, dating yeah. is. I'll take you to the cinema. We'll go and have a KFC after, which in my books is classy. Actually, <laughs> you're like in, a, in, in so England. Luxurious. In England, when you were like a teenager, it was shall we go and meet in the field with a bottle of Diamond White. And I'll finger you until you don't have an orgasm and then go home. <laughs> Stinking of cider and piss. Yeah, I think it's because they have to drive such long distances that the, yeah, one maybe. of them has to stay sober. Well, no, because not in small towns. No, they have to drive long distances. Everywhere's very far. No, it isn't. Yes, it is. You're talking so much shit. Oh, just carry on with the story. And also, they much dressed a lot better because when I was a teenager, I was wearing like those Lambretta jumpers. Do you remember them? Ugh. No. You do. And Carl Brini. You're a bit old. You're quite a lot older than me. Actually. Shut up. No, I'm not. Ten what years is a long about? time, Susie. It's because you were in Stoke and I was in London. Ten years we is a really much... long time. Fuck off. Look, let me show you I'm that... literally about a year older than you. Do you know what? I don't care if this gets cut out. I need to show you what this what it looks like. Is it like, um, uh, what do you call them? Kappa slapper. Kappa. It was worse than that. They, like, Kappa was, Kappa was just a bit before me, I think. <laughs> Stop saying that. What? That uh, was it my was. time. Kappa was my time. Well, I'm sorry. But... I didn't wear Kappa, but, you know. Do you not remember this? Oh, look at this. All the boys had that. Do you not remember that hoodie? Oh, yeah, that Keep is it in. Belts. Keep this in. I'm going to put a picture of this on, on the Instagram page so that everybody knows um, what I'm talking about. Um, okay, shall I just Carry on, get please. on with it? Okay. So Meg's going to go home to study. Julie's going to go and get fingered. 
At the end of the day, Julie spent hours getting ready for the party while Meg started studying. Julie tried to get Meg to go, but she was insistent that she would study and pass the test. Yeah, well done, Meg. Yeah, Go, good Meg. On you. Team Meg. The girls were rather close, and Julie didn't like leaving Meg alone to be bored while she was out having a blast. That's so fake. That's not insin. That's like insincere. Like yeah, oh, but like sorry, if Julie Meg, wants to go you... and have a nice time, well, don't don't pretend that you're worried about Meg. Well, yeah, she couldn't you, give you're a quite fuck. right because Julie finally gave up using the excuse that she would cram in homeroom the next day. Mm. And what's homeroom? Is it like homeroom? Um, is it like you know when you used to be in? Uh... It's like like study, like research, like yeah, like, um, revision. Yeah, I fucking know. <laughs> Julie went to the party and had the time of her life with a date. She headed back to the dorm room around 2 a.m. and decided not to wake Meg. She went to bed nervous about the midterm. <laughs> she went to bed nervous about the midterm and decided she would wake up early to ask Meg for help. She woke up and went to wake Meg. Meg was lying on her stomach, apparently sound asleep. Julie rolled Meg over to reveal Meg's terrified face. Oh. Julie, concerned, turned on the desk lamp. Meg's study stuff was still open and had blood all over it. Meg had been slaughtered. <gasps> Julie in horror fell to the floor and looked up to see, written on the wall in Meg's blood, aren't you glad you didn't turn on the lights? Oh my God. It's like that, do you remember that, um, Oh my. not that door one? Oh yeah, yeah, the yeah. Headphones. That's what it reminded me of. Oh my god! Mm, creepy. So mm. the killer had slaughtered her when Julie came in. The killer was already there. <sighs> she interrupted. Julie interrupted the slaughtering. Julie just after she got slaughtered. A slaughtering. <laughs> oh fuck! That's gross. No. Okay, I'm gonna tell a story. Now. <laughs> She's got slaughtering. You're minging. <laughs> I babysat a parrot. Love it. It said some disturbing things. <clears throat> My neighbour, Henry Johnson, would be out of town for two weeks. His wife had just left him and he needed to clear his head. So he asked me to house sit. As a broke college student, I said yes. The house sitting duties included taking care of the Johnson's parrot, a 17 year old African grey, which is the how same old, one as Chantal. How old are parrots? Do the parrots live until? Because 17 feels old. Um, I would say that's like 50. I, no, you're, so you're about to guess. <laughs> I'm going to actually find out. Mm. How long do parrots live for? How long do parrots live for? That's annoying. Stop. That is quite a big, that's quite a broad spectrum. What? 10 to 50 years. Yeah, I, yeah. The longest so lived parrot recorded was a female macaque named Bluey, who lived to be 99. There you go. So actually, um, Snickers is in its prime. I'll get to that. The house sitting duties included taking care of the Johnson's parrot, a 17 year old African grey named Snickers. That's cute. Like Snickerdoodle. Snickerdoodle. Snickers. Then we've established this, that we do This not is weird like that there's a little throwback to us talking about Snickers. It's spooky. Mm. I didn't know much about birds, but he left me detailed instruct. I didn't know much about <laughs> birds, but he left me detailed instructions on how to take care of her. The first night of my job, I decided to stay for a few hours. I needed to get a problem set done. A problem set done. A problem set done. What does that mean? I don't know. Fuck it. I needed to get some homework done, and the Johnson's large, empty house was the perfect study place. After feeding Snickers and giving her water, I got set up on the couch. But it wasn't long before she interrupted me. Stop! <laughs> I don't know how to do a bird voice. Stop! 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 <laughs> I'll do it. You tell me what you need me to say. No, because there's quite a lot of the parrot. So I'll I can't just repeat it then. <sighs> okay. <laughs> I whipped around. Snickers was standing on her perch, staring at me with one grey eye. Stop! Stop! She repeated. Rolling my eyes, I went back to the problem set. Differ oh, it's equations, differential equations. Why did I decide to major in engineering again? Oh. I tapped my pencil against the page. Maybe it's time for another snack break. Stop! Oh, God! Stop! <laughs> Snickers. Why does it sound like olive oil? 
from fucking Popeye. Snickers was bouncing from one perch to the other, bobbing her head as carefree as could be. But the way she said that sent shivers down my spine. She was clearly imitating someone in distress. Probably just repeating from a movie, I told myself. But I was so, so wrong. Stop! Oh, God! Stop! Henry! Stop! <laughs> Henry? That was his name, Henry Johnson. I turned and stared at the parrot. She stared back at me and whistled a few times. <whistles> and then she continued. You can't whistle, can you? Well, it's not it's very weak. Well, can you? Okay, you can't fucking whistle at all. So, put a sock in it. Then she continued. Stop, oh God! Henry, stop, oh God! My blood turned to ice. I stared at the parrot, my heart hammering in my chest. What, what exactly happened here? What's she repeating? I decided to call my parents, but they didn't seem to share my level of concern. Ah, oh, your Aunt Sheila had a parrot. My dad said, that thing would pick up all kinds of crazy words, movies, phone conversations, it'd scream, say the F word, everything. I wouldn't worry, Abby, especially with Raquel leaving him and all. And all. They probably had some huge fights the parrot picked up on. I wouldn't be surprised if it got worse. Oh, uh, right. And he was right. Over the course of the next hour, Snickers continued to repeat stop and Henry, but also said a variety of other things, from curses to pleasantries to movie quotes. I Fuck want... you! <laughs> I want a Snickers so much now. <laughs> Ice cream. Uh, uh, fuck you, I'll be back. How are you today? Comment allez-vous? Comment, comment allez-vous? Comment allez-vous? Why is it speaking French? Oh, I think Henry's quite a travelled man. Oh. Finally, around 10 o'clock, I started getting ready to leave. I threw my notebook in my backpack, switched off the lights and headed for the door. What? Goodbye, Snickers. I called out in the darkness. Then I reached for the doorknob. Put the knife down! <gasps> oh my gosh. I froze in my tracks. I couldn't see Snickers anymore, but I could hear her rustling about in her cage, talons clacking against the metal rails, feathers flapping in the silence. Maybe she's just quoting another movie. Maybe she's, put the knife down, Henry. The bird repeated, my heart stopped. Stop, oh God, stop, oh God. Snickers was agitated. I could hear her feathers hitting the metal rails of her cage as she flapped her wings. Thunk! She hopped back and forth, perch to perch, as she clicked her beak erratically. Stop! Oh, God! Stop! I stood there for a long time. Seconds stretched into minutes, but she didn't say anything more. Just clicked and whistled and flapped around in her cage. I flicked the lights back on, dropped my backpack on the floor and made a beeline for the Johnson's bedroom. Henry was very clear with his instructions. I wasn't supposed to enter any of the bedrooms or the basement. I was supposed to stay on the main level no matter what, but I climbed the stairs anyway. After looking around, I found their bedroom. It was neat and tidy, the burgundy bedspread laying smoothly over the mattress. I walked around, my heart hammering, hoping what I am... I walked around, my heart hammering, hoping what I was imagining wasn't true. But it was. Because in their closet, I found a small box. A small box containing Raquel Johnson's wallet and driver's license. I made my way back down the stairs, my legs shaking. Snickers looked at me, cu oh, fucking, I can't speak. Snickers looked at me curiously from her cage. These are like trophies, aren't they? These are killer trophies. I turned out the lights, locked the door, and hurried down the sidewalk. As soon as I get home, I'm calling the cops. As soon as I ping, I pulled out my phone to see a text from Henry Johnson. I asked you not to enter the bedroom. I whipped oh around. Oh, my God. But the dark sidewalk extended behind me, totally empty. How did he... Oh, a camera, of course. I broke into a run towards my parents' house at the corner, almost there. Ping! I know what you saw. I sprinted harder, faster. My feet slapped against the pavement, almost there. Ping! I didn't pull out my phone. I didn't stop until I was locked safely in my parents' house. And finally, I read the text that he sent. If you tell anyone else, you will pay. I didn't listen. I called the police, and after a thorough search of his house, they found something horrible. 
Was it a body? Was it a body? Was it a body? Was it a body? Raquel's body in the freezer in the basement. Henry was trying to flee town, but had a head start by making it look like he was just going on vacation. Come on, Henry, do something a bit fucking more original. So he hired me to house sit. I don't think he realized Snickers might repeat what she heard that night. And sometimes I wonder if Snickers knew more than she let on because apparently she was Raquel's pet from before they were even married. Maybe she wasn't mindlessly repeating. Maybe she was trying to get justice for Raquel. Love it, love it. Maybe Raquel, I think, I think, Raquel's ghost is in the parrot. Yeah, oh, it's just a fucking great pet. You what know how pet, pets are loyal and if pets can speak, like... What fucking legend. You know what I mean? What like, fucking legend. Oh, my God. Um, I was going to... No, I won't say that. What? I'm gonna, I'll just have to get cut, maybe, if I say it. What? Go on. Well, you, remember the Nicola Bully thing? The woman no. who, who dr- yes, you do. I swear we've spoken about this before. Where yes, the woman who drowned. The woman who drowned and was yeah. found later, like down the river. Uh, allegedly drowned. Allegedly drowned. We don't allegedly know what drowned. Um, apparently, her. Well, you know, her dog was with her. Yeah. Uh, and then on this forum, this person had been like, "If that dog could speak, imagine what it would say." Yeah. And it made me think of like, imagine. Nicola had a power. I know, because that dog has all the answers. <laughs> yeah. And then this Doesn't whole it? thread about the dog and what it can yeah. say. And I was like, people are fucking idiots. But yeah, they are. It, they, but, do, they do raise a good point. The dog oh, Yeah, the dog I know. See, Dogs dog. see so much. Was there a Black Mirror episode where they... Because, you know, the people who murder... <laughs> I don't know why I said it like mm. that. Um, can leave, like, children and dogs because they can't speak and they don't know what they saw. Did you see that Black Mirror episode where they could take something out of the animals in the baby's brain so they could see it? Oh, no. Oh, it's really interesting. Oh, I love Black Mirror. Should, I'm sure it is. I'm sure it was Black Mirror. You should Sounds watch it. It's Black really Mirror-y. good. Okay. 911 transcripts. Initial 911 call came in at 10.57 p.m. on the 12th of the 11th, 2020. Dispatcher, 911, what's the nature of your emergency? Caller, I don't know. I mean, I don't know if it's an emergency, but could you, could you please send someone? Dispatcher, do you need police or is this a medical emergency? Caller, could you send an officer out? I mean, I don't know. It might just be some kids messing around or something, but caller goes quiet for a few seconds. Dispatcher, hello? I'd feel better if someone came out to check. What's your address? 1056, redacted. And what's your name? It's Erin Feller. Okay, Erin, I have officers on the way. What's going on? Well, I was calling my dog in from the backyard and she was growling at something out there. I couldn't see what. I finally got her to come inside and the second I closed the door and locked it, something smacked into the glass window. Not hard enough to break it, but it was hard enough to rattle the door. Okay, what time was this? About five minutes ago. Were you able to see anyone? No, there's blinds on my back door and they were down, but I heard the doorknob jiggling a few times before I called you. I yelled that I was calling the police and the noises stopped, but like I said, it could be some kids, but I don't know. Okay, and have you heard any other noises since then? No, just the door, but my dog's still growling. Okay, I have an officer en route to you. Are the doors and windows locked? Yes, they're locked. All right, an officer should be out to you shortly. Stay inside and keep the doors locked until the officer arrives, okay? Okay, thank you. You're welcome. Call ends. Officer Collier was dispatched to the location. He saw no signs of any persons around the property. He did note that the dog was still anxious and growling at the back door. He advised Miss Feller to keep her doors locked and call if she should see or hear anything else. 911 call comes in at 1.27 a.m. 911, what's your emergency? It's me again. Can you send an officer back out, please? Is this for 10.56 redacted? Yes. What's redacted? Redacted, is it like, this is like the transcript of a call log. So they've not kept the address in. Oh, I see, sorry, yes. Yeah. I'm with you. Yes, someone was just looking in through my front window. Can you send someone? I have an officer en route to you. You said you saw someone looking through your windows. Yes, I was in bed 
But Ginger, my dog, ran to the front door growling. I pulled up the blinds a bit, but I didn't see anything at first. Then I saw a face pop up, but just the top of their head and eyes, like they were playing peekaboo. Uh. I screamed, and Ginger started barking and going nuts, and the person popped down out of view again. How long ago was this? A few minutes ago. They popped up again just before I called you, but they went back down under the window. I'm in my bedroom now. Did you recognize the person, ma'am? Let's go American now. Uh, no, I only saw... Ma'am. Ma'am. No, I only saw their eyes and, and the top of their head. But they looked, I don't know, like a mime or something. A, a mime? Yes. White makeup on their face and head. Mm. Really disturbing. Okay, I want you to stay on the phone with me until the officer arrives. Just stay in your room until then. Okay. Does your bedroom have a door lock? Yes, it's locked. Dispatch stayed on the line with Miss Feller until officers arrived. Officers arrived and announced themselves 11 minutes later and the call was terminated. Officers Copeland and Laurie arrived on scene to find Erin Feller in great distress. She claimed to have seen a mime at her door. Officers noted that Miss Feller did not seem to be under the influence or drugs of drugs or alcohol. Miss Feller seemed anxious but lucid. Miss Feller pointed out to the officers where she'd seen the suspect peering through her window. The glass had no visible marks on it other than a smear of white paint. Officers were able to see two impressions in the dirt just underneath the windowsill outside the laundry room. Officers stated the impressions looked as if someone had been standing barefoot on the tips of their toes. Officers checked the area and the field surrounding the home and found a trail of footprints leading away from the home to the woods behind Miss Feller's home. When followed, the footprints seemed to be erratic and moving around in a zigzag pattern. The prints stopped abruptly at a large tree, but there were no signs of any persons in the tree. The footprints looked to be made by someone who was walking barefoot and walking solely on their toes. Oh, who does that? Fucking creepy mime bastard. Officers <laughs> checked the woods but found nothing of note. Officers spoke with the closest neighbours a half a mile down the road. The neighbours stated they hadn't seen or heard anything out of the ordinary. Officers reminded Miss Feller to keep her doors locked and advised her to call back if the person or persons returned. 911 call. Came in at 3.41am. Dispatcher. 911, what's your emergency? I need the police now. The sound of her dog can be heard barking in the background. Is this for 1056 redacted? Yes. I just saw that person looking in my bedroom window. I was asleep and I heard tapping on my window and when I looked up, the face was pressed against the glass. How long before the police get here? Oh no, that's fucking horrible. That's so horrible. Caller can be heard breathing rapidly and sounds as if she's moving around the house. Dispatcher. I have officers en route to you now, Miss Feller. Can you lock yourself in your bedroom? No. It was still tapping on the glass when I left. It keeps smiling at me. I'm upstairs in my office. It has a lock. Caller tries to calm her dog. Okay, Erin. It was smiling at me and like mouthing words or something, but I don't know what. They, they didn't have eyelids. Okay, Erin. Just stay calm. Officers are not far from you. I don't understand why... Caller goes quiet and the sound of her dog growling can be heard. Dispatcher, are you there? I heard something. I think they're in the house. Cow. You can stay quiet if you need to. I'm still on the line. It's, it sounds like, wait. A muffled metallic sound can be heard following by, followed by a scream and barking. Oh my God, caller screams and sounds to be running. A door slams, Erin Feller. Ginger, come here. Dispatcher. Erin, are you alright? Can you tell me what's happening? A full minute passes with no response to dispatcher's questions. Caller can be heard trying to calm her dog. Dispatcher. Erin? I'm in... Hello? I'm here. I'm in the downstairs bathroom. Where are the police? They're four minutes away, Erin. They're going to do their best to get to you as fast as they can. Just try and remain calm. You're doing great. It got inside the fucking vent. Erin... Did you say the person was inside your vents? Can you clarify what you mean? Like the fucking vent the heat comes out of. I heard something moving in there and I bent down to flip open the vent and saw that white face. Oh! Staring out. 
how big are your air vents, Bert? Aaron? <laughs> Aaron, how big are your... That's a personal question, actually. You never ask a woman how big her air vents are. Thank you. How, how big are your air vents, Aaron? <laughs> My God, Aaron. <laughs> the standard size. I don't know, six inches or so. Not big enough for a fucking person to crawl through, but they did. They did. Okay, take deep breaths. It's not a person, Aaron. It's a fucking ghost. <laughs> Offices are less than two minutes out. Oh, my God, why is it taking so long? Just keep the door locked. And I think... Cooler goes quiet. I hear it moving around in the vent. It's like a fucking rat in it. Tapping on it. It's okay to remain quiet. I'm here. Do you have anything you could use as a weapon? Um, I have the towel bot. <laughs> oh my god, it's poking its fingers through. Oh! A door slams, followed by screams and high-pitched laughter. Caller sounds to be running. Laughing grows louder, almost maniacal in nature. Call ends. Officers McQuarrie and Pape arrive on the scene approximately 56 seconds later. The front door was open prior to their arrival and there were obvious signs of a struggle throughout the home. Officers called out to Miss Feller but did not get a response. Officer Pape found the dog in the downstairs laundry room staring into the air vent and whimpering. The dog had obvious cuts and scrapes around its snout and paws from attempting to enter the air vent. Traces of white makeup were found on most of the windows in the home on the inside of the glass. After a thorough investigation, officers collected blood and hair samples inside four of the vents throughout the home, along with fingernails that were embedded in one of the grates. More traces of white paint were found inside all of the vents in the home. Hair samples matched the hair length and colour of Miss Feller's. It's noted that all of the vents in the home were measured at 6 by 10 inches, much too small for a person to move through or even fit inside. To date, Miss Feller is still missing, and there is a wall. There's a war on. And there's a war on. And there's a war on. So focus on other things, you fucking stupid bitches. <laughs> to date, Miss Feller is still missing, and there is a reward for any information leading to her whereabouts. That is very creepy, isn't uh, it? That's very creepy. A ghost in the vents. Oh, I hate that. Peekaboo mine in your air vent. I to be honest, that. I can't really imagine what an air vent looks like. Is it all like, is like it at a foot level? Is that what um, she means? Yeah, or they do, can be. Do you look be. up and see it? It, it, look... it depends where they are. It's like, it's like that. It's that. It's that. It's exactly it. That's f imagine a fucking face coming out. Oh, shut up, you dickhead. <laughs> you little fucking dickhead. <laughs> uh, I knew that was coming and I knew what you were doing. I have, to the listeners who couldn't see what I've just done, uh, I just got the shit out of Susie by um, looking Pointing. very horrified, pointing at the vent and then looking absolutely terrified of it. Yeah, well, um, that'll come and back and bite you in the uh, ass. Thank you for that. I very much enjoyed that. Um, are you ready for goosebumps? Let's do goosebumps. <laughs> So last time it all got a little bit confusing, but where we got to in the story is that you, well, you, Stinko and Dare are all fucking hanging out. Mm -hmm. Turns out Dare's an absolute lunatic. His tattoos are moving all over the place. Um, and he's basically said uh, he's in charge of the games. And if you win, you get to leave. And if he wins, you have to stay and be part of Scare Care Forever or whatever it was called. Yeah. Day scare. I can't remember what it's, it's called. It's almost like Jumanji. Like, I, I go into the you game. You go into and the I'm game. Yeah, forever. that's it. Okay. okay. Awesome. So, are you ready to continue? Awesome. So yeah. Dare's literally just said, You get to come into the game and you be with me forever and you never leave and you be part of this crew. Mm -hmm. That's not fair. You yell. You never told us that. You never asked. Mm -hmm. Dare shrugs. Which makes the pictures swirling around on his body look even weirder. Stinko stomps his foot. Thank you. Take me home right now, he demands. The only way home is through the games, Dare says. He steps back and disappears into the tattooed walls. A large flat box appears in the spot where he was standing. On the box top are the words, the game box. As you gaze at it, you shiver. A cold wind blows through the tent. It lifts what? Do you know what? That actually scared me. That actually did make me jump when you did good. that. That was very good. A cold wind blows through the tent. Very good. It lifts one tattooed edge slightly. If you grab Stinko and run to the open edge of the tent, turn to page 96. If you open the box, go to page 22. What do 22, you want to do? Do you want to open the box? Always. Okay. I'm like Pandora, me. I love boxes. <laughs> Fuck's sake. Do you know what? I hate you this on a laptop. Perfect, got it. <laughs> you decide to open the box. 
I think I would have gone that as well. Dad said the only way to get home was by winning the games. Might as well get started. Look out, Stinko warns. What if something bad is in there? It's just a game, you tell him. But what game, Stinko asks. You can tell he's scared. So are you. But you're also curious. You put your hands on the box top. Stinko leans over, breathing down your neck. Slowly, carefully, you lift the box top off. You lean over the box to see what's inside. You see yourself and Stinko. It's a mirror, you exclaim. Oh, and we're in the mirror, Stinko adds. And the mirror is in the box. It's very fucking complicated. And the mirror is in the box. Don't do this on a hangover because it is honestly a nightmare. And the mirror is in the box, you hear Dare say. And if you're in the mirror and the mirror is in the box, well then, I guess you're in the box too. Oh my God, I've never Jesus said box. Jesus Christ. You and Stinko are shoved into the box. The top comes down fast and you die at the end. That's not true. That's not true. <laughs> Stop fucking with me. The top comes down fast, so fast you can't fight back. How You're big trapped is this inside. fucking box? No, it's bigger than that vent. What? <laughs> I'm kidding. I'm not even kidding. What? The top comes down fast, so fast you can't fight back. You're trapped inside. You'll never win now. Dare is finishing playing the game, and so are you. The end. It's literally you've, you've, you've fucked up. I've died. I promise you, you've died. It says the end there. You're dead. Oh, for fuck's sake! The end. Are you serious? I'm serious. I know. Doesn't it feel awful? But I I've had no adventures. Well, I'm, you that, you chose your own doom, so like I did. Oh, that's bullshit. Some fucking madman in a cape and spinning around giving me fucking Irish Honestly, riddles Honestly, I about... saw things like of dragons and all sorts in there when I was crawling through it. I was like, we're going to get to this and you've picked wrong. Oh. I would have picked that though as well. You would have opened the box? I would have opened the box. Yeah, because yeah. you think like, come on, come at me. Yeah. Come at me. Yeah. Uh, well, that's a really... You'll, fin you'll never win now. Dare is finished playing the game and so are you. Well, do you know what? I don't want to play his fucking game. No, I think it was... I think Dare was a twat. Yeah, Des, I'm ta he's just, tattoo -ed he's just I imagine him looking a bit like Johnny Depp. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Like, and, and he's got his own band, and yeah, they, they have, like, moderate sleep success. Sleep with him, just don't hang out with him after. It's very yeah, toxic, very, very toxic. Very toxic. Tattoos on the neck, very mm. sexy, but very toxic. Yeah, and has, like, a, a core cool sort of fan group, but they're all a bit strange. Yeah. Great. Well, um... Sorry about that, mate. Thank you for bringing me to the end. All right, fine. We will start a new one next yeah, week. Yeah, we must. Shall we go into We Get Haunted So You Don't Have To? Yes. Because, Susie, yeah. I, know that, I know that you're in charge of the game today. Oh, have you got a surprise? However, I do have a surprise. I, Hannah Bichkowski, yeah, have created my own spirit box. Oh, my God, what? Mm. <laughs> How did you do this? When do you have time to do this? You're I know, like I know, that's why I'm tired. That's why I'm I know, I'm really dedicated to the, to the podcast. Oh, my God. I'm so, so what I thought we'd do... Impressed. What I thought we'd do is... Mm -hmm. oh, so many emails coming through. Um, what I thought we'd do is, I'll do the thing. Uh, I've... <laughs> I've... What's the word? What's the word? Not collaborated. Created? I've, no. Collaborate? No, that's not... Oh, you know when you... Uh, I don't know. Anyway, <laughs> I've sorted it so that... Uh, so that I can ask it some questions and then... Uh, yeah? You ready to uh, hear you, it? So you've got a twinkle in your eye which no, suggests no, no, you're no. fucking about. No, you I'm haven't not created about. a spirit I've box. I've created a spirit box. I've created a spirit box. <laughs> Shall <laughs> we begin? Let's get haunted so you don't have to. This isn't, this is, this, I mean, I don't want to take away from your week. Mm -hmm. So, you know, whatever. Um, right. Okay. Just to make sure I've got it up. Okay. <sighs> really getting this zone now because I'm a believer. I'm a believer in the ghosts. You are now. Okay. Spirits. <sighs> Out of me and Susie, who. I know what you've done. Is the most annoying person. No, I need you to be honest, spirits. Who's the most annoying? Here we go. It's not working for you, is it? Yeah, it's fine. No, not working. Oh, I'm not sure I picked up anything from that. <laughs> Hang on, hang on. They're just, oh, they're not, really I'm... getting, no, they're getting. Listen, love listen, your you spirit need to give box, it, you though. Need to give it a second. You need to give them a second. Mm. 
you need to just it we'll sounds like um you're clearing your throat in that no we're, we're, no that's just that's the that's the radio that's thing. it yeah yeah it's like the um yes it the, is. the static yeah the flemmy flemmy static i don't know I, it's just the the the, the spirit <laughs> Susie. <laughs> <laughs> that's massive. Such a bell. No, that's what do you mean? <laughs> that's your voice going. No, it's not. Susie. No, it's not. <laughs> Who's the most attractive? Oh, I wonder what the fuck it's gonna say. Out of me. Who's or got Susie? a better nose? Who's do what? Yeah, all right then, fine, you pick that. <laughs> Who's got the better nose? That's just <laughs> Why does the ghost have a Stoke accent? <laughs> Maybe it's from Stoke. That's weird. Well, the ghosts are following me around now. <laughs> um, okay, no, but seriously, ghosts. I know, I know Susie doesn't believe me. So in order for Susie to believe me, can you please tell us who's in the room with us? Can you please just... <laughs> Daddy Duck. Keith Chegwin. <laughs> Oh my God! Checkers has finally turned up. And on that note, do that's you know, been you know, episode no, 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 twenty-nine. No, no, no. Shut up, shut up, shut up. Thank you. No, it so hasn't. <laughs> no, it uh, hasn't. Do you want to ask it another? Do you want to ask it another question? Who's being a bellend today? Okay. <laughs> you just clicked on the bit the way you. Shh. There's nothing like it. The spirits have spoken. You're so annoying. Okay, have you got <laughs> so how long it took me to do that? <laughs> <laughs> to come um, to create my spirit box. Thank you so much for tuning in um, to this non chaotic episode. You've got to do yours. Are you yeah. fussing it? What are you doing? You've got to do yours. No, I'll save it for next no, 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 time. No, 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 that's not, that's not a proper thing. That was a joke. That's not a proper thing. You, well, we you have to do the proper joke. one. You told me you just invoked the spirits. I did, but sure, come on, do yours. I need you to remove mm. a strand of your... <laughs> your bra. <laughs> <laughs> I need you to strip your clothes off. <laughs> I need you to pluck a strand of hair from your head. Oh, my God. Oh, I'm probably going to get fucking... What's the spell's going to get? Oh, it, was, oh, it was like four. Got it? No. Hang on. I thought I did, but I don't know where it's going. I plucked a bit of hair off your freaking boob earlier. Yeah, can I not just pull it out like that? I, it, it, I need a bit of your hair. It, I suppose it needs to be plucked, doesn't it? Done it? Yeah. Now put that... Oh, my God, look at the root on that! Oh, I need my hair done. <laughs> oh, what a menga. Now right, what put, it in, um, put it in a drink. Have you got any drink oh, left? That's fucking disgusting. No. I've got that. You're going to have to drink it. I can't believe I'm going to drink my own hair. Uh, well, um, I wonder if we can dip the lights. You want to dim them? I'm going to try. If not, Lewis is out there. He can... No, it's all right. I think I can... Hannah, I'm going to play a game with you. It's a Japanese ritual game called... They are all, they're the worst ones. One Man Chit Chat. <laughs> all you need to do is set up two chairs in a dark room. We've dimmed the lights. I need you to look at this chair here. Mm, okay. 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 Yeah. So, all you need to do is pay attention to whatever spirit is sitting in that chair. Right. Okay. Now, the way to invoke a spirit is to put one strand of your hair into a drink of your choice and drink the entire thing. And then what do I do? Swallow it. Have you done it? I can't believe she's I'm putting a, She's putting a hair... I could have just pretended. No one will have seen into it. Into the smoothie. Hang on, I can't, it won't go in. It's all sticky at the side. A single strand of your hair from your own head. Oh, this is disgusting. Why am I doing this? I suppose it is my hair. And I did wash it this morning. Drain it completely, hair and all. Ugh, really? Okay. Things I do for the podcast. Finish the hairy drink. Oh, God. Ugh. 
Right. She's done oh, it. She's that's, actually that's done it. Really now that you've done that, concentrate on the chair. Okay. Look at it. Mm-hmm. And begin speaking. What do I say? You may speak about anything you like. Hello, spirits. I've Talk been watching. Talk about your fears. Um, I'm really scared of spiders because I woke up with one in my mouth once. Uh, be I'm serious. You need to talk about something. That's true. I'm really scared of spiders. Tell us something that scared you recently. I'm scared of the, the price of butter now. Uh, it's about £4 for a 300 gram tub, which I think is absolutely terrifying. Absolutely terrifying. It is absolutely so terrifying. terrifying. Yeah, why are you why looking all weird? No, you you honestly look like you've changed. You look like you you look like you've changed. You look like your face has changed. My face has changed. You know, like in yeah, What Lies Beneath, what the, lies film? beneath the Film. Why are you doing that? I do. It's freaking me out. It's freaking me out. You know, in What Lies Beneath what the Film, beneath when she looks into the bath. Looks into the bath. I was thinking wrong. Now look at the chair. Well, I'm scared. Really, really focus on the chair. What was behind you? Nothing. Checking, there's nothing there. Look at the chair. On the chair. Oh, no, Susie, you're freaking me out. Why's that light on? Look at the chair. No. And the chair will speak back to you. No, it won't. Yes, it will. What's it going to say? Stare at it. <laughs> <laughs> oh my God. Oh, did you know that was going to happen? Yeah, I did. You absolute dickhead. Ah. <laughs> oh. Oh my god! Uh, well, no one will have heard that, so you're gonna have to explain. Uh, so uh, I just got Mike to uh, freak the fuck out of Hannah and over the uh, speakers. He just said, "Help me!" I didn't even hear that. I just heard, <laughs> and then I was out the chair. I was like, "Bah!" <laughs> yeah, fight or flight. You really fly. Oh, I fly. Um, that's been really wonderful. Um, we're gonna thank our patreons. Now, um, if you haven't signed up to Patreon, again, you get a weekly bonus episode and you get a ghost hunt a month for four pound fifty. It's a price it's of a so coffee. Good. Join, join the gang. We, we're join gonna the gang. Everybody's enjoying themselves. Shit. You get such great little bonus content hosts. You get like two hours of Contentos. extra content. If, no, you get more than that. You get like three hours worth of extra content. Mas for contentos. Para ustedes. So we ha we've had so many new patrons and we fucking love you all for it. So we're going to thank them now. You're the best. Thank you, guys. Okay, uh, oh. we want to say thank you so much to all of our patrons. Um, we first up we have you in Bedo. Thank you so much, you in Bedo. You are a legend. Thank you, you Ewan. Um, we also have Tracy. Thank you so much, Tracy. Thanks, Tracy. You're a Patreon babe. Charlie Barker. Thank you so much, Charlie Barker. We love you loads. Uh, also, thank you to Aaron Whips. You're amazing. We have Evs. Thank you so much for joining Patreon. Uh, Jack M94. I think I've already made a joke about driving up your road. Woo! Grace Reynolds, you're also amazing. Thank you so, so much. Angel Cashmere, you're incredible. Thank you so much. Gary Rowland, thank you so much for joining Patreon. We appreciate it so much. Kadina Wright, thank you so much. You're a star. Mina, thank you. Uh, thank you to Amy Hartley. Grace Shortman. Thank you so much to Abby Hicks. You're a legend. Laura Bunn. Laura Bunn with a double N. I love that. I really fancy a bun. <coughs> oh, Eve Charlotte. Thank you so much, Eve Charlotte. You're a legend. Fran, just, just Fran. You're a legend. You know who you are. Thank you so, so much. We really appreciate it. Uh, Katie Pulwa, thank you so much. Uh, Lily Davis, we thank you as well. Uh, Laura O'Brien, thank you so much, Laura. Phoenix Beaton McLean. Oh, great name. Uh, Kirsty Harp, absolute superstar. Thank you, Chloe Hales. Thank you to Eden Holt. Alice Kirkwood, I think. I don't know why I did an accent, but I think it's what it is. Uh, thank you to Miranda Jarvis. Mariah Lewis. Or Louie, we're not sure. Um, Charlie Lancaster, thank you so much for your pledge. Rebecca Murray, your star. Thank you so, so much. Abby Goldston, thank you. Dawn Dahlia. I love that. Double D, baby. 
<laughs> oh, Lucy Wilton. Thank you, Lucy. Amelia Lorraine, you're also an absolute star. Thank you so, so much. I love that. Zoe Skinner. Thank you so much, Zoe. Jill Butcher. Thank you, Jill. Thank you to Laura as well for your pledge. Rachel C, thank you so, so much. You're amazing. And Emma Wood. Thank you so much, Emma. Emma Norman. Thank you very much. Thank you so much, Jodie Marshall. Thank you, Jodie Marshall. And finally for this week, it's Emily Keeble. Or Kibble, not sure. I think it's Keeble. Thank you so, so much. You're amazing. Please uh, enjoy all the bonus content. We'll be back next week. Yeah, this has been Ghost Hunt oh, episode 20. Or we'll see you Friday. Yeah, we'll see you Friday. Bye, guys. Bye, 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 bye. bye.